All right, in this video, we are going to talk about how to evaluate logarithms. Okay, so here's the steps, and you're going to write these steps down and use them every single question, and you'll be fine. Remember, we do the swirl. Okay, so remember if it's log base a of b equals x, we do the swirl. So we think we write it in exponential form. So a to the x equals b. Write it in swirl. Then we make the bases the same, and I'll show you what I mean. Then we evaluate the exponents. If the bases are the same, we can just set the exponents equal. You'll see what I mean here in a minute. Let's look at this first example. Okay, log base six to thirty-six equals x. Okay, so I do the swirl. Six to the x power equals thirty-six. All right. Well, some of you may be like, I already know what this is, but let's just go through the process so you know what to do. We want to make the base the same, so I need to leave six alone. I know that 36 is 6 squared, right? So the bases are now the same. If the bases are the same, I can then set the two exponents equal to one another. So x equals 2. And that's my solution. Let's try number 2. Swirl it. Log base 2 of 8 equals x. So 2 to the x power equals 8. All right? So now let's get our bases the same. So, same. so 2 to the x. Now, think about 8. 8 is 2 times 2 times 2, so that is 2 cubed. Now that our bases are the same, I can set the exponents equal, so x equals 3. We're going to do lots of examples today, so let's do another one. Log base 3 of 3. Now, if there's nothing set equal to something, then just think set equal to x, okay? Swirl it. So 3 to the x power equals 3. Well, Let's think, what are my bases? My bases are the same already, so what's the power here on three? That's just a one, right? So set it equal, x equals one. Look at number four. Didn't have an x, put an x and swirl it. Three to the x equals one. All right, now, let's think about this. This is a property of exponents you may or may not remember, but um, you need to know this one. You can't really get the bases the same here because they're going down, and one is not a root of three. I'll show you what I mean later. But what you do need to know is that um, anything to a certain power is equal to one. So let's think about this. Three squared is nine. Three to the first is three. What if I went down to three to the zero? Well, what happens here? From here to here, I divide it by three. From here to here, I would divide by three. But three divided by three is one, right? So this is the property you need to remember. Anything to the zero power is one. So if this is the swirl you end up with, then you just know that x is equal to zero. So you could rewrite this as three to the x equals three to the zero power if you wanted to, but you gotta remember this property. All right, let's try the next one. Let's swirl this. Nine to the x power equals three. All right, so let's think about this. Three should be our base because nine's part of th came from three. So the three squared gives me nine, but then bring that x down. And this three is fine, but it has an unwritten one as the power. Now I can set them equal. Divide by two, so x equals one half. Okay, so hopefully let's look back at this for a moment. Hopefully you see that. The, the one half power of x here is taking simply the square root of nine and gave me three. And you may not have to go through all those steps next time you see something like that. But that's how it gets there. If the one half power is the same as this one, let's swirl this one. So 125 to the x power equals five. To the first power, right? Well, let's think about this. 125 is five times five is 25 times five is 125. So five to the third, bring that x down equals five to the first. So three x equals one, divide by three. So x is one third. So the one third power is the same as taking a cube root. So 125, the cube root of 125 is five, okay? One third power is the same as the cube root. Just like over here, we said a square root is the same as the power of one half. Try some more. Swirl this. 16 to the x power equals 8. All right, we need to get our bases the same on this. So let's 
go as far down as we can. 8 times 2 is 16, but it's times 2, not 8 squared. So we can't use 8 here. So let's get this down to 2. So 2 times 2 times 2 is 8, right? So this is 2 to the third over here on the right. But 8 times 2 is 16. So this is 2 to the fourth. And I bring this x down. It didn't go anywhere. Right there. Now those are set up. Now I can set the, since the bases are the same, I can set the exponents equal and divide by 4. So x is 3 fourths. Let's look at number 8. Swirl it. 7 to what power gives me 1 seventh? Okay, now another rule of exponents you need to know is this. Um, we said, a while ago, we said like if 7 squared is 49, 7 to the first is 7, 7 to the zero is 1, right? Well, what happens if you go into the negative powers? Remember, we just divided by 7 each time, right? So if I divide 1 by 7, what do I get? I get 1 over 7. So what did I do? What happened here? I did a negative power. That negative put the 7 in the denominator. The 1 left it a 7. If this was negative 2, I would have squared the 7. It would have been 1 over 49. But in this case, it's just a 1. So all that did was put it in the denominator. So I can rewrite this as it. 7 to the x equals 7 to the negative 1 power. So x equals negative 1. Let's look at number 9. Swirl it again. 1 third to what power gives me 27? All right, so let's get our 3 as our base because we know these are all powers of 3. All right, 1 third is the same as 3 to the negative 1 power. Remember, we just talked about the negative 1 power. So I'm going to put 3 to the negative 1. I'm going to bring that x straight down, however. 27 is 3 times 3 times 3. So that's 3 cubed. So now I need to set negative 1x equal to 3 and solve it. So x equals negative 3. Look at 10. Let's swirl this guy. So this is saying 16 to the x power equals 1 half. Okay, let's get a base of 2. So over here, mm, let's do the left. 16 is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. So that's 4 twos. So 2 to the 4th with that x carried down. And over here, this is 2 to the negative 1 power. Remember, remember the negative 1 power just makes it a denominator. The bases are the same, so I set 4x equals negative 1. Divide by 4. So x is equal to negative 1 fourth. All right, let's look at this. An 11. Now the first thing I would do is change these to fractions, not decimals. So rewrite this as log base 1 half of 1 fourth. All right, and then I would swirl it. So I'd say 1 half to what power is 1 fourth, all right? And then we would put these in, uh, get some common bases. Well, let's use two. So this would be two to the negative one with that x. And this would be two to the negative two power. That two times two gave me the four. The negative made it a fraction, all right? So it's two to the negative two power. So if negative one x equals negative two divided by negative one. So x is positive two. All right, let's look at 11. Now this one looks different because there's no base right here. All right, guess what? If there's no base, the unwritten base is a 10. Okay, if there's nothing there, it's a 10. If it says log, it's a 10. So when I swirl it, I have 10 to what power gives me 100? Well, I hope that you know that 10 squared is 100, so x would be 2. What about over here? Look at this, swirl it again. I get 10 to what power gives me the square root of 10? Well, what do we say the square root power is? Well, that's the 1 half power. Notice it's not negative, it's just 1 half. Square root is 1 half. If it was a cube root, it would be 1 third. Now that our bases are the same, I just set the exponents equal, and I don't have to solve any further. So x is just 1 half. What about this one? Swirl it. 
10 to what power gives me 10? A cube root means to the one third power. Base is the same, set the exponents equal. All right, I know there's a lot of examples here, but I need you to write them all down. All right, now let's talk about this. Before we jump into these weird ones with LNs and Es, let's talk about pi. You know what pi is, it's 3.14, on and on and on. It's a rational number that we just accept in math, right? Well, we have another one, and it's E, and it's 2.72, blah, 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 blah. Calculator knows that number. I'll show you how to type E into your calculators in another day. But for, you, for now, just know that T, E is an accepted number. Now, we said this. If we have a log with a base of 10 here, we call it common. It's a common log. And we, we can write it log without the 10 of 7. That's an understood 10 there. If the base is not 10, but it's an E, that, that understood number, E, 2.72, if E is the base, then it's what we call a natural log, and we write it LN. Okay? We don't have to put LN of E because that's understood by the term LN, natural log. Okay? It's French for la naturelle. That's why the L is before the N. All right? So let's try one of these with the natural log. It works very similarly. All right? So look at this one. <clears throat> I swirl again. Remember, what's the unwritten base? E to what power gives me E? Well, hopefully, this is just E to the first. You see that? So X is 1. Jump up here to 16. Swirl it again. E to what power gives me E to the third power? Well, the bases are the same, so the rules have not changed. So X equals 3. All right, swirl it again. Uh-oh. Log base E. You know what? I wrote this one wrong. This one should say, my bad, natural log of E. Swirl it, and I get E to what power it gives me E. Since it's in a square root, it's the one half power. So the, the bases are the same, and X equals one half. All right? So hopefully that works for you. Natural logs versus common logs, the only thing changing is the base the rules are still the same, okay? Now, I'm not giving you any more examples because I've done a ton of them. We'll go over some more in class and get you ready for your assignment.